Hello everyone, and welcome to FilmPrize University. In this instructional course, you will learn the basic craft and form of film editing to help you and your film team complete your project as you move forward in your journey towards prize history. My name is Colby, and I am the filmmaker liaison for FilmPrize Junior and the Louisiana Film Prize. I've been a professional filmmaker for the last decade with several award-winning films under my belt and more. In today's video, I will be covering the basic techniques of editing and post-production from a professional point of view, as well as the theory behind what makes a good edit and some tricks you can use to elevate your film to the next level. How about a magic trick? I will be covering topics that include editing programs you can use, how to organize your project, beginning your edit, types of cuts, finalizing your film, and more. If you're past the basic steps, skip to these sections via the time code on screen as necessary. So let's get started. If you're new to editing, you may be wondering which editing software is best to use. The truth is there are many different great softwares, each with their own pros and cons. However, only a few have become industry standard and not all of them are affordable or easy to learn. I don't even know what I'm doing. Keep moving forward. I mean, this stuff is way too advanced for me. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Today I will be using a film industry stable called Adobe Premiere. Many major studio films you've heard of were edited using Adobe Premiere, including Terminator Dark Fate, Deadpool, Avatar, The Social Network, Superman Returns, and Gone Girl, and many more. Adobe is available for download through their website with a free trial and is compatible on both Mac and PC. You can find a link on our website and more information in the description down below. However, I don't like it. If you feel that Adobe Premiere is not a good fit for you or is incompatible with your computer, we also have a few other options that are great for beginning editors to work with. Sony Vegas Pro is another popular editing software used on the 2007 horror hit Paranormal Activity and also comes with a free 30-day trial but is only available on PC. For Mac-only users, Apple's iMovie is a free and easy-to-use editing software that many beginning editors go to and has a simple layout that's easy to jump into. Lastly, if you're not happy with any of those options, you may consider OpenShot, another free editing software compatible with both Mac and PC. Here's a tip. If you need in-depth tutorials on how to operate each of these programs, we have everything you need to get started, including download links and other important information on our website and in the description below. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. And of course, these are not the only editing programs out there. Some of you may be curious about Final Cut Pro or Avid Media Composer, and if you're interested in those, then we encourage you to do your research and find the best editing program for you. But regardless of the software you use, the basics of storytelling, editing, and filmmaking apply across the board. It's a prestigious line of work with a long and glorious tradition. Now that you have an editing software for your film, before you jump in, there's a few important concepts that every serious editor should know. Editing can be a long, complicated process for many projects, and some projects can have hundreds or even thousands of files to work with, so it's very important to keep your projects well organized. Of course, your project may not be large enough to require multiple editors or thousands of files, but having a properly organized project will also help you tremendously when it comes to saving time, reducing work, and finalizing your film. There's a slight possibility of overload. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Good. I'll see you tonight. Here's a tip. When creating your project folders, be sure to use a simple format that anyone can understand. The idea would be to make your organization so simple that anyone opening the project can browse the folders to find what they need without your help. Spending a few moments to keep your project organized will save you time and many headaches and will help you reach the finish line with flying colors. Now it's time to get started on your edit. First, you will need to open your editing software. Again, in my case, I'm using Adobe Premiere. Create a new project and save it in the proper folder. I recommend saving your project very often, as you don't want to have your program glitch out or your power cut off and lose hours of work you forgot to save. Once you've created your project, you will need to begin importing or adding your assets. Once you've imported your assets, you may need to combine your sound with your footage. This process is called marrying sound. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together. Today. If you used a boom mic and a separate sound recorder on set, so we gotta hold, I gotta 
We got a plane. Your sound isn't attached to the footage you'll be using, and you have separate video clips and separate audio clips. All right, we're good to go again. Let's do it. One shot. Just one shot. Hopefully, you used a slate on set before each take. This will allow you to align each piece of footage with the matching sound files and sync them together. If you used a microphone built onto your camera or had your boom mic feeding directly into the camera, you may not need to marry the sound and can jump right into editing. Just make sure your sound and footage are married together before you edit the entire film to save you from hours of syncing later. Speeds. 36, cut to the weather girl, take one, marker. <clears throat> Here's a tip. The final part of preparation for me is organizing scenes. If you have a lot of footage to use for your film, you can't afford to waste time fishing around to find the right clips. This is another moment where good organization comes in handy. And we finally arrived at the fateful moment where you will begin cutting your film. By now, you should be familiar enough with your chosen editing software to be able to use the basic cutting tools it offers to create a sequence or timeline for your film. If not, please check out the tutorial links we have listed in the description below or on our website. Woo! Hey, I did all right. <laughs> Is that all you got? Your first edit will be your first draft, a rough cut. Like a script, you will create your first draft from which the final draft will be whittled down. Your first rough cut will be just that, rough. But that's okay. I've edited projects that have had one or two rough cuts before the final cut, and some that have had up to 20 rough cuts. Depending on who is directing your film or who is producing it, you might have a few people that get a say in how the final cut looks, so there will always be revisions. This is it. This is what we get for our 40 grand denim, another one of your safari pictures. When starting your rough cuts, picture comes first. You will have plenty of time later to focus on music, sound effects, logos, credits, color, and all those bells and whistles. Cool, firecrackers. I'll save these for later. For now, you should just focus on telling the story. Taking time to add in every small detail at the beginning not only slows you down, but it may cause a lot of wasted time with unnecessary work that might be changed once you receive notes or critiques, or even just feel different about it later. Here we will be getting into abstract concepts and theories surrounding editing as an art form. Editing is not unlike painting a picture. Your editing software is your canvas, and there are an infinite number of things you can paint onto that canvas. Your film can be abstract, or it can be narrative, or it can be something else. Only you know what your film can and should be. Because of this, there is no one way to cut a film. Film is art, and art is subjective. To each their own. However, since the beginning of modern editing, a few basic concepts have developed and have proven to be tried and true methods of effective storytelling through editing. The most common question I hear as an editor is, how do you know when to cut? What moment of a shot or scene is the perfect spot to cut to a different shot or scene? What I've come to learn is that there is no direct answer to this question. I'm a creative person and my feelings inform my art. That includes when I'm cutting. Depending on the emotion of a scene, whether it's comedy, drama, horror, or whatever, I'll need to feel when it's right to cut. What is it? It's just a feeling. For comedies, Fast cuts tend to work best when quick, humorous moments can have more impact, though it's not a hardline rule. I am sorry, but we can never be. Despite today's setback, I will at some point become a field agent. And when that happens, one phone call could take me to the other side of the world. Who am I kidding? I'm a middle-aged man who's missed the train. You don't deserve this. I don't deserve you. You're so young, so full of life. For dramas, longer takes can allow for more time to deliver the emotion of a scene and sell how the character feels to the audience. It's not easy for me to admit that I've been standing in the same place for 18 years. Well, I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I got a life too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you. Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? It's important to edit to the emotion of the scene so that your audience will connect and not be taken out of the moment. That's why there is no set rule on when to cut. You want your cuts to be invisible, not noticeable to the audience. 
Allowing your viewers to feel as a part of the world of the film is necessary if you want them to enjoy your film. You will need to remember to feel where your cuts should go. Don't be afraid to let a moment linger or see how it feels or to cut a moment short to see if it's funnier or has more emotional impact. And please do not cut something just to cut. Every shot, every angle of your film, every cut should be with purpose and feeling. Like every note and beat behind a great song, there is purpose and meaning behind every great cut. Here's a tip, edit to the eyes. This is a decades old concept used to keep cuts invisible and draw audiences into the action. You want your viewers to follow the emotion of a scene, to pay attention to certain aspects of the story you're trying to tell. When audiences watch a person on screen just as in real life, people tend to pay attention to the eyes. Watch where your actors look when they close their eyes. If your actor sees something important, cut to that object or cut to that person once they see it. Your audience will react as if it were themselves who saw the object. This concept will help make your cuts invisible and the viewers will be none the wiser. Many different emotions are told through the eyes, so if you're looking for a focal point on which to base the emotional or comedic weight of a scene, it's in the eyes. If you're trying to direct your audience in a certain way, watch the eyes of your character and let that be the starting point. Another important thing to remember is to stay focused on the story. Does your cutting move the story forward in a meaningful way? Every moment on screen should be important to the story. Remember, don't cut just to cut, but also don't include shots just because you have them. Every frame matters and your audience will scrutinize every moment on screen. They will ask themselves, what does this mean? Or where is this leading to? Or why is this happening? Why, Mr. Ayers? Why? Why? Why do you do it? And those are great questions for them to ask as long as they will receive an answer and as long as you're editing in a clear and concise way that doesn't lose their attention. What's that all about? What's this? Here's a tip. Try editing your film with rhythm. Treat your film like a piece of music or a poem and keep pacing and rhythm in mind. You don't want your great film idea to be bogged down by slow, boring pacing or hard to follow with odd, uneven rhythm. Find a good pace and rhythm for your scene and try to keep it consistent throughout. In the end, as I said before, editing is an art, and art is subjective. As long as you have a vision for how you want to tell your story, and you make the cuts and choices that you feel are right, you can't go wrong. What you currently have in your mouth is art! Art? It may help to try and think of the movies that inspired you or perhaps inspired your film. How are these films cut together? How did they keep your attention and move the story forward with every shot? That's not bad. I hope these basic tips will help you tell an engaging and enjoyable story for your audience. So you've finished your rough cut and you've got a picture log. Hooray! Congratulations! But what's next? Maybe you want to add music, color, titles, or more to your film. If you're in need of music, chances are you might not have a music composer as a friend. But you can't just Google your favorite artist, download some tracks, and throw them in your film without risking major copyright infringement. You hear what they said, Jay? I'm gonna be indicted. Yeah, but you only said what they told indicted, you. Indicted, Jay! Or without paying astronomically pricey licensing fees that can take months to clear. But most films fall flat without music. That's because music emphasizes the emotion in any given scene. In many cases, it's a fundamental piece of the puzzle. So where do you go if you've got a small budget and need great music to bring your film over the finish line? Lucky for you, nowadays there are a few affordable solutions to the independent filmmaker. Websites such as Premium Beat charge a low flat rate for the use of each piece in their curated music library and have a great array of music for every genre of film. Other sources such as Envato or Pond5 are also great tools to find stock music, stock video, and graphics for use in your film. Oh yeah, you definitely need some color in here. Well, you know, that's what I was thinking. Ooh, really? Yeah, go nuts. Take a look at any great film from the past 20 years and you may notice striking, bright color palettes. Films are rarely shown with boring, bland colors unless it informs the mood of the scene. That's because filmmakers use color to evoke feeling and emotion. For decades, filmmakers were stuck using the footage as they shot it in camera. There was no easy or practical way to color a film and how you shot it usually was how it looked. But today we have many tools at our disposal to color our scenes the way we want them to look. If you're using Adobe Premiere like myself, you have the ability to color grade your film right within the software. Using effects such as Lumetri Color or one of the built-in LUTs, 
is a great way for independent filmmakers to manipulate the color in their film on a budget. Check out the links in the description below for some great tutorials on how to use these tools to help you color your film. However, these tools are nowhere near as powerful as professional color grading software such as DaVinci Resolve or Adobe SpeedGrade. DaVinci Resolve in particular is a common industry tool for color grading. It's also available for free. If you'd like to take the opportunity to get serious about the color in your film and download DaVinci Resolve, check out the links in the description below to download and watch a basic tutorial on getting started. Of course you have to give credit to everyone who worked on your film. Their efforts and hard work should not go without the recognition and you may have contributors, sponsors, or locations that should be thanked for helping you get your film made. That's where titles and credits come in. You may have noticed that some films have opening credits at the beginning and closing credits at the end crawl when the movie is over. Some films have credits only at the end. How you wish to display your credits and titles is up to you, but if you're making a short film, I recommend saving your credits for the very end. You only have a short period of time to hook your audience and tell your story in a short film, and opening with credits can be detrimental to how an audience views your short film. Credits can be more than just a crawl or title card. They can also be fun and engaging. Comedy and action films have taken advantage of exciting, visually interesting credits for decades, so you can too. Just make sure to remember to keep it in line with the tone and mood of your film, so as not to confuse your audience. That's why movies like Schindler's List don't end by playing yakety sax over a blooper reel of outtakes from the shoot. If you'd like a great tutorial on how to add credits to your film with your preferred editing software, we've added a few in our description below. You're now ready to export your final cut of the film, but you can't just hit export and call it a day. That's because not all file formats or export settings are the same, and each one serves a different purpose depending on what your film or video is for. If you've ever noticed that TV news channels or sports games look different from movies, there's a reason for that. The cinematic look that a movie has primarily derives from its frame rate. The industry standard frame rate is 24 frames per second and gives narrative films a smooth motion that audiences have become accustomed to for more than 80 years. Anything more or less and your film risks appearing like a documentary, a live broadcast, or just choppy and unpleasing to the eyes. Additionally, your export format matters a great deal. There are a dozen formats for exporting your film, but in order to guarantee that your film is in the highest quality possible, exporting in the industry standard Apple ProRes 422 or H.264 formats are highly recommended. Here's a tip. For the Louisiana Film Prize and Film Prize Junior, we recommend using these formats when exporting your film. Find tutorials on exporting for film in the description down below. We're in the end game now. And with that, we have come to the end of the basics of editing with Film Prize University. Don't be intimidated. There are an infinite number of ways to edit your film, but that's okay. The same can be said for painting, architecture, writing, or even cooking. What you will be doing is finding your way of editing, and there is no one else that can edit the way you edit. We only hope that these tips, tricks, and recommendations will help you bring your film over the finish line so you can finish your film and show it to the world. To learn more about the greatest short film competition on the planet, please check out our links and information in the description down below or visit our website at filmprizejunior.com to learn more. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>